welcome, welcome to the Codes Coach. We are excited to see you here in the live stream. Great hit. So let's go ahead and get started. I have this little section called What's New. Uh, today, what we're doing is I'm using uh, National Geographic Kids. So for some of you on the live stream, if you've seen the links down in the video or if your parents had subscribed to the newsletter, I put the links for the theme for today. And I just thought it had some amazing uh, articles and pictures on frogs. And this one was one of my favorite, like this huge flying frog. Um, so I thought today's project theme being on frogs and creating a story about frogs to make people aware of uh, the variety of frogs, uh, we would get started. We use scratch.mitedu. If you can, have your parents create an account. And what we do here is in the live stream, we look at uh, some of the comments from people. So for example, in this studio here, if I do a refresh, if you're watching and you want to reach us, uh, SP20Fox says hello. Uh, don't forget the refresh. Uh, awesome. Jax Vader is here. We've got a, ooh, a Fina Fina 15. Could not hear Blue Whale. Now can't hear VR either. All right. Uh, now I think everybody can. No? Are you guys on? Is it working now? Problem. Now I can. All right. So thanks for the feedback. Uh, my, my issue on my side. So, hey, episode two, just like coding and life, things go wrong and then scramble to fix it. So I appreciate your patience. So guess what? I make tons of mistakes. Uh, coding is all about making mistakes and learning. So I don't want you to miss the hints. So uh, Blue Whale, could you go ahead and just give a hint? So how long have you been coding? And then what's your, I don't know, words of inspiration for new coders using Scratch? I say they should probably look at a tutorial first. And I think that Tutorials help inspire you. They show you what you, an awesome project that would be really easy to do. And believe me, I've actually done some of them. Awesome. So tutorials is a great hint. I'm hoping people can hear. Yeah, I see the, the, they can hear now. Thanks for the feedback. Yeah, I'm trying to get better at kind of tracking things. So uh, her hint was a tutorial. So some of you may be saying, well, how do I get to a tutorial? So hopefully if you've logged in here, I'm gonna go ahead and open this link in a new tab. This is, if you're starting scratch and you do not have a login, that's okay. You can still create a project. Don't worry about this week. So if you're watching this video and later and you're like, wait a minute, I don't have an account, you'll still be able to create and save your project to your computer. The nice thing is if your parents help you create an account like we are here, we have a studio. You'll see projects here that I'm going to ask you to put in things. This is where we share comments uh, while we're uh, here live. So that way I can kind of see uh, what people are seeing, right? Ooh, uh, Jax Vader has a great hint, a scratch book to do scratch projects. The library, you can check out a scratch book from the library. Uh, the current version of Scratch is 3.0. Great hints. Uh, v, what would you say since we kind of had the audio messed up earlier? Um, I would say maybe get to know what each block basically does so that when you know what each block does, you can build your own projects basically doing anything. That's a great hit. That's a great hit. So you're in the right place. This is where we kind of experiment. We'll go pretty fast. Uh, I believe YouTube has this DVR feature. So if you need to pause the video, I think you can kind of pause. It's just then you'll be behind with the live stream. So just be aware if you do that. The recording will be available afterwards. So today's theme, uh, hopefully I kind of show you some of the scratch getting started pieces. Uh, I did want to let you know as part of what's new is the oh, uh, Blue Whale, your audio. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that's way too loud. <laughs> so that's part of the fun of scratch is there's some cool sounds. So just be aware uh, uh, on your volume. I can hear it through here. Um, I wanted to let everybody know this is a challenge for everybody. So V Blue Whale, uh, there is a project in the studio. Now you'll notice when I go in the beginning, I had this floating coaches code bus. Okay. Um, and you'll notice here, I call it episode two. There's this, and you see it with a green background. Well, if you create a project by next Friday before next Saturday's live stream and 
whatever project you put there, I will add it to the beginning of the live stream. So instead of Coach's Code Bus, uh, I'll pick and then and, uh, play your project. So your creation will be part of our live stream and future recordings. So if people are watching these episodes later, uh, they'll get a chance to see it. So I just wanted to let you know so you, you can kind of get a hint. I'm not going to tell you anything more, and we'll see how it goes. But if you remember at the top of the top of the show, it kind of looked like this. Uh, let me open it up. Right? So you notice when I play this project, there's my bus. And that's a scratch project right there. Right? And you're like, wait a minute. It's the coach's code coach. How did he do that? Well, that's that's the secret. I'm basically uh, kind of showing you behind the scenes a little bit. But I'd like you to be part of the scene. So check out that project. Friday, I'm going to start checking out things because I need a little time to kind of put it uh, and get it set up ahead of time for next Saturday's live stream. So that's part of what's new for next week. Um, this week, we are uh, this part of the National Geographic Kids. I'll show it really quickly um, on the site here. It's a magazine that comes out that I think is pretty cool. And their theme was frogs. So I definitely, this is free on their website if you go National Geographic's and you can kind of follow the link for the amazing frogs. I put those um, in in my uh, live stream YouTube description. So your parents can find the links. If you're looking at this video later, sharing it with friends, that would be great. So let's start creating our frog theme, right? So today, um, Anybody have, let me check really quick on questions. I want to see if there's any comments. I'm going to try. So V or Blue Whale, if you see anything in the comments, I'm going to refresh these. Let's see if there's some new comments. Um, let me get through. It's snowing here right now. Yes. Hey, where I'm at, put in a snow in the chat if you're getting pounded on. I'm in uh, Boise, Idaho, but uh, it is coming down pretty, pretty heavily, okay? Um, yeah, four inches. Oh, no, we're not the only ones. Jack Spader's got some. Awesome. SP Fox. Fina. We got Whit Whitney 144. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. All right. So, all right. I think I fixed the audio. Good, good, good. All right. The rest is, all right. Good, good. I think the latest chats come in the top there. Four minutes, three minutes. All right. So, let's get creating. One of the first things I'd like to do is with the Frog Project, You'll notice what I do in Scratch is all I clicked was the Create button, okay? And I like to give my project a title. So I'm going to call it uh, Froggy. Um, I like uh, creating little games or stories. That's, that's kind of what I like to do. So V, what do you, what do you suggest for... Um, um, should we draw our own object that the frog will catch? Have any suggestions? Yeah, I think we should draw it. Okay. All right. So that's one of the things that Blue Whale even mentioned was what what is a sprite? So these are the characters, and every Scratch project starts with the Scratch Cat as a default. But it's kind of a blank canvas. So this is our writing piece of paper. It's a blank piece of paper, which is the best way to create your stories, your drawings, your sketches. So we want to draw our own, and this is how you would add sprites down here. Coach Newton, we can't see anything. Um, you don't see anything? Let me see on the live stream. Mm, I see it. I'm, I've got a TV off to the side. Um, oh, you're not. Oh, you're sorry. You're not seeing my screen. My apologies. Let's see. Let me just share with you. Got it. Oh, you know what? The only the only issue with that is it kind of messed you guys up in the little video. Uh, yeah, that's hard. I'm going to just stop for now. And let's see. You guys can see it. Yeah, sorry, I didn't realize I had been sharing. Because you guys in the video then get clipped out. Um, what you could do is you could watch the YouTube stream. It'll be slightly delayed. Um, see if that works. Because I want to get the, the coding started. Let's see. Let me let me go ahead and do it for this scene. What I'll do is... Um, here, watch, watch live. While we're coding, we'll do this. Sorry, people. We're just trying to get it fixed. All right. While we're coding, they're a little bit messed up in my window, so. 
Let me see if I can quickly fix that. I'm going to change these guys. Tell me if you can see. Oh, I think I moved the wrong thing. Welcome to the world of live stream. All right, that's kind of working. I can kind of see. There we go. All right, you guys are in the corner. We got you. We got you. Yeah, we fixed it. All right, never give up. Okay, so I'm going to start coding here, and hopefully you guys can now see me. Uh, let's pick the drawing, right? So we're going to have a frog in it, but we're going to start by painting. So this is how you create a little character. Pick the paintbrush, and suddenly you're in this nice little template here where you can create objects. And these are some of the tools, right? So what do you suggest we draw, Blue Whale? What do you think? V, what do you guys think? Fly. A fly. All right. So let's see. I'm going to click on, let's see. If I click this little brush, this gives me a little dot on the screen for me to start drawing. I like to use these shapes so I don't mess up my drawing too much, and you'll see why. So I picked the round shape, and then what color should we make the fly? What do you think, Blue Whale? Give me a color. Oh, yeah. You're muted, Blue Whale, so I can't hear you. What do you think is a color for the fly? Pick a good color. Oh, I can't hear her. V, give me a color. I think she's muted. She might not be hearing me. What do you think for the fly? Oh, you're muted as well, V. Oh. Black, I guess. Black. Let's go for a black. Okay, so black, you can turn color all the way up and brightness all the way down. I get a nice black. I go back here, and what I like to do is I'm going to zoom in so you can see. The reason I like the oval is I kind of like to make the body. It just makes it easier to have a body. Now, don't worry. It look, it's going to look like a giant fly, but let's see. I'm going to do free form on the wings, a little free form, and you'll notice I'm trying to kind of draw him a certain direction. Hey, this may be the best fly drawing I've ever had. Okay. Uh, and then I kind of like the black. I'm going to go for the opposite color. I need a white. And I'm going to do kind of like eyes. I don't know. So everybody draw your own fly creature or whatever that the frog is going to be trying to get. So now don't worry, he's huge. I like to just be able to see my drawing, and that's where coding is awesome. We can just then go to the code and shrink the size. So now you'll notice, not only do I have the cat sprite, but I can select my fly sprite. And I can put him anywhere on the screen just by dragging. So I kind of want a starting location. I always like putting my sprites somewhere to begin with. So as soon as I drag it to this location, let's use the blue blocks to say go to that location. So I'll zoom in here. Okay, so this is the location on the screen. The X position is 165. And you'll notice this tells you left and right on the screen. Where is it? And the Y tells it where up and down. So X and Y coordinates will give you an exact point on the screen. Now, we want to get rid of the scratch cat. We're going to have a frog, right? Our theme is frog catching the fly. So when you click on the sprite you want to get rid of, you'll notice this little trash can here. So let's get rid of that. And boom, I'm stuck with the flight. Now we need the frog. So this is where I'm going to choose a sprite from the library. And you'll see there are a lot of things here. So I'm going to pick animals. It's alphabetical. Fish, fox. Now you'll notice there are two frogs. There's this green frog here. And then there's this frog here. I like this one. As I hover the mouse, I could tell there's an animation already in it. So I'm clicking Frog 2. So there's my Frog 2. And I'm going to put him here in the lower corner. Now, this is where, um, when I was thinking about this project, you definitely need a background, right? This is a, a white, clear black uh, background. Let's pick something here. Now, again, if you're an artist, you can paint your own 
you can pick a surprise one, upload a picture. This is where you would do it. So I'm going to just choose one. So I click here, choose. Uh, what do you suggest, V? Outdoor. I put in the wetland. Ooh, wetland. Let me do a search for wetland. Oh, that's true. You know what? That one doesn't get used a lot. I like that one. Wetland. Whoa. I like it because, check this out, the frog really is well hidden in here. Like real frogs, right? And this fly, now I just realized, though, my fly, he's kind of hard to see, too. So I'm going to change his body color. So this is what's nice, is as you go along, I'm going to go to my fly. And then right up here is where I go to the costumes. You'll notice I click costumes. And I want to change his body color. And this is where this big paint bucket comes in. If you click this paint bucket, it will fill a color. You'll notice, since my color is white, and I hover the paint bucket, it will make all of this white. Well, I don't want it to be white. I want it to be, let's see. What do you suggest? I want it to be pretty bright for, the, for us to be able to see in the game. I'm going to turn saturation up so I can see the depth of the colors. A red fly? I don't know. What do people think? I'm going to go for Let's try red. Okay, I've, I've chosen my color. I've gotten the paint, the bucket. It's almost kind of pinkish. That's okay. And I'm going to make the wings a different color. I'm going to make it kind of greenish. How's that? And I'll fill in the wings. Oh. Ah, one bucket. Oh, now it won't it won't let me fill in the wings. Here's the issue. Is it's not this area is not closed. So the fill will only fill if it's closed. So when you're making your drawings, and if you know you want to fill something, you have to remember that. So I'm gonna go kind of here and try to fix it by closing it and closing it and now go back to the bucket in the green so this is just so yes um there's a fly spray in like the frog a fly um let's check it out yes in here yeah there's a little tiny one right <laughs> uh let's see if i zoom in so what I was going to do was replace that. It's already there. What I was going to do is I was going to make this like a red color and just kind of have it as this is how we're going to write the program to see did the frog catch the fly. Does that make sense? So I was going to kind of make it a bright red. And you'll see why later in the code. So let's see. I do color saturation 100 color 100 and brightness 100 so if you do everything 100 i'm gonna make this what was there as a fly just this part red so we're gonna write our computer program to say you know what if the frog's tongue if this red part hits the fly you've caught it otherwise you've missed it and you have to do the same thing on this one here now what i'm doing is this is the tongue coming out and this is the tongue not there. So I don't want the wings there. I'm going to get rid of them. So I'm going to select. And if I select the fly, I want people to know where their target is. So I'm kind of keeping that black dot. I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So here's a, a piece to look at is when you're drawing in vector art, these have been grouped together. There's a circle and you can see the wings. But when I click on it, it treats it as one object. Here is where you can ungroup it. I'll say, I don't want it as one object. I want it to be ungrouped. And now if I try to select a wing, I can select the wing and delete it. Select this and delete it. So now that black dot is there kind of as my target. So if I go between the two, so in the game, it gives you a chance to see where is my frog's tongue going to come flying out. All right, I'm going to do a quick check and see if there are any questions or comments, anybody have any problems, check it out. Ooh, light gray. Yeah, Jax, uh, Jax Vader 4. It's tough. While I'm coding, I'm, I'm missing the comments. A light gray. So thanks for the feedback in there. Um, and definitely type in the chat if you are, let us know what you're creating. Like, what is it you're drawing? Are you drawing a fly? 
uh, remember, you can pick your own. So I'd love to kind of hear uh, what it is you're creating as well. So I'm going to go back to my froggy. All right, so I hope everybody kind of follow that. Um, I'm going to just do a recap, right? So I've drawn, I've drawn the uh, fly. He's huge. So I'm going to change his size right here. That's kind of the easiest. So pick the size you want. If I type 40, I kind of like that. It'll be kind of hard to see. And I'm going to use some code that Zinnia had shown. She's on the Scratch team. She's got some great, uh, if your parents, uh, talk to your parents, uh, Scratch team has some cool YouTube videos as well. And they had a game, a uh, great way to learn, like uh, Blue Whale had mentioned tutorials that are built in the Scratch, but also the Scratch team puts out some uh, little tutorials. I like doing this live with all of you. So I'm going to make the fly. This is the starting location, but we're going to have the fly come across the screen. So V, have you done uh, projects where uh, you want a random location for the object to come out? Do you use this random position block? Um, not, yeah, if you wanted to do it basically, then yeah, they, you could use the come from random location block. So that puts it, every time I click it, people will notice this fly. I like this game because it's really kind of hard to see some of the objects. So the frog is hidden and even the fly is hard to see. So I think that makes the game pretty challenging. And it depends on what you have, right? You can have this frog catching flying unicorns, whatever object you want. I'm really curious to see what people create. So it goes to a random position, but what would you guess V is the, on the screen, what is the farthest to the right in terms of X. Have you ever uh, done that? 200. 200, let's try that. So you'll notice I'm going to the blue motion blocks and I'm scrolling down a little bit and there's something called set X. So that means I can tell X what to be, the value. I'm telling the computer, all right, let's try 200. I'm gonna try what he said. I'm clicking 200 and I'm gonna attach these two blocks. Now let's try it. I click it once. Oh, there's 200. So I want him to be a little bit further. What do you think? I want him to be almost off the screen. So two, So you'll notice it goes to a random position and he always starts on the right. So how about two, 250? Let's see what that looks. Oh, that's not bad. You can kind of see where he's gonna come. We kind of see his face. Flies have a head, flies head. Okay, so we've got, I'm going to move this, I'm going to get rid of this starting block. Okay, so this is something we want to happen at the very beginning. So if you put these three blocks together, you've just created for any game or uh, story or project, if you want your character to go somewhere random each time and all the way to the far right, all you need are these three blocks of code. So if somebody hits the green flag, there we go. Okay, now we need the motion. So what do you suggest... We want, we want it to come flying across the screen so the X is going to change. V, what would you say? How do you normally like to do it? Um, it's like basically minus X. Um, change X by negative like 5 until something. Okay, let's see. Change X by minus 5. So I'm going to click on the block. I like that. So I need that in a loop, right? Let's do, so loops and repeats are over here in the control. And, oops, if I click control, the third one there is like a forever. Let's do a forever loop. So if I put the block inside, and there goes my fly. But it's only done it once. So we need some code that says, all right, if you've reached this side of the screen, so this is something we're going to use. I'm in control still. This is pretty, pretty powerful here. If you are, if this is true, if the position of my fly is all the way over here, so if X250 was all the way on the far right, what's your guess, V, that this would be on this far left side? Negative 250? Negative. Let's try it. Let's try it. Okay, so I'm going to a math operator because I'm going to say if my x position is less than so you'll see this is a, a math operator it says okay i need to say x position in here is less than 
minus 250. So X position here, when you click on the motion, here's the tricky part. This is like the chapter to different types of commands, but there's a scroll bar here. Be sure you scroll down because there are some commands that we need at the very bottom of the blue. And there it is. There's a, there is a value and you'll notice it's an oval shape. That's my X position. So say, oh, if my X position, that's what I need. And I can put it right inside that oval. So Blue Whale, are you doing this part? Or are you doing a different, what are you working on, Blue Whale? I'd love to hear what you're working on, but you're muted. I'm working on making, I'm working on using arrow controls for the frog. So Ooh, frog got it. All right, so we're going to. can go towards the fly. Ooh, good. Wait, so I'm going gonna... to. And I made sure that the fly always goes to a random position. And then I'm trying to make, you're the frog and you're trying to catch the fly. Got it. All right. So we're going to come back to you for how you made the movement for the frog. Because right now I'm coding the fly. And we're putting the code here that says, if the fly's X position is less than minus 250, which is all the way over here, I want it to go back to this side. Well, guess what? We have that code here. We've done that at the beginning of the game. So I'm going to show you something. If I right click, so here's the secret of duplicating blocks that you've already used. If I right click, you see duplicate, add comment, or delete. I don't want to delete. I want to duplicate. So but uh, I got a copy. So now I'm going to put those blocks inside the if. So this tells the computer, these are called conditionals. So don't worry about definitions. But uh, programmers use this all the time. This is how the games and uh, screens, there's a conditional that says if this user presses the side button, there's an event that says, oh, turn on the screen. So this is not something that we're just doing just in scratch. Real computer scientists use conditionals. That's how computers make a decision. But basically, you are programming the computer to make a decision. And we'll put this inside of here, inside of the forever loop. So let's check that out. I'm going to, oops, let me stop. Um, whoops, what am I missing? Oh, I missed the beginning green flag. No. Nope. Let's debug. What did I do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a stop. Okay, there's my fly going across the first time. And then he gets stuck. Let's see, less than. I sometimes have had funny things. Let me try less than 240. There we go. So it's odd. Sometimes Scratch will get stuck. You'll notice that when I said X position less than 250, there, there's definitely some issues with some of their code, like specific spots for sprites. But now I have an endless fly coming across. And it also goes to a random position. So my game, every time I start it, will be different. So I've kind of zoomed in on the blocks, but it's not that complicated. Look how many commands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight commands to the computer, and there are some things here that are checking the position of the sprites. Okay, so so far, I'm going to show you full screen. Let's see what it looks like full screen. Let's try it out. All right, Blue Whale, do you have yours moving like this? Is yours kind of somewhat random like that? I see your head nodding. Yes, yep. but, I'm, but I made the fly go faster. Go faster. All right, so, so how would I do that? How did you make the fly go faster? Here's the code we have. What did what did you ch what so would you change? I said when green flag clicked, go to random position forever. Glide point five seconds to random position and then point towards frog two. Oh, you have it. Oh, you have different code. Ooh, awesome. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. I like that you went on a different route. That's what's cool about creating. Uh, your program will look different. So uh, at the end, let's make sure we'll share. We'll take a look and see what it looks like. Uh, we have about 10 minutes, 10 minutes. So I want to get to, let's see, I want to get to the frog. Okay, so this is where, um, and let me, oh, let me show you quickly. I will share what I'm doing so far. I'll click share, and this is my cover page. Um, click on the green flag. And use arrow keys and space bar for the frog. 
Now, what do you think I'm using the space bar for? What would you guess? And I'm going to, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to add it to the studio. What do you guys think? So I'm going to the studio and I'm going to add the project. So right now, if you want to be a curator, those of you that joined last week, I responded to your um, uh, chats and I made you curators. So you have an invitation if you look in your um, your little uh envelope here you'll see an invitation to be a curator of the studio if you would like to be a curator of the studio and you're just joining this uh, first time this episode uh, just put something in the chat of the comments project that we've been looking at so if you say hey I'd like to be uh, a curator I'll do a refresh it uh, so uh, those of you that are here last last week yeah Jax Vader we're gonna look up your curator Ooh, what a uh, Whitney did 250. Yes, thanks, Whitney. 250. Yeah, if you want to be curator, just say, hey, um, I'd like to be a curator. I will add you to the studio. That just makes it easier for you to then um, add projects. So these have already accepted. Jack Spader, VR Blue Whale, you haven't accepted yet. So as a curator, it just makes it easier for you to add projects. And Jax Vader, you'll see he's already got his cool fly. We're going to check that out in five, a couple more minutes. Let me, I want to finish some of the coding. So people that are following along, you would click add projects and mine pops up here. It's kind of hidden by our uh, assistant coaches today and I'm clicking on it. So you'll always be able to see coach Newton's here as well. And we're going to play Jax Vader's and, and any of you that share in the next 10 minutes, uh, we'll play here at the end of the a live stream. I'd love to kind of see your work. Uh, to me, the community of Scratch is really important in sharing. Uh, let me go back to my Froggy project. Okay, so I, I just wanted you to see how to go and share it. Let's go see inside. Okay, here's the frog. So I'm going to go fast on this part. And um, that way you can kind of see in video. So here's how I chose the sprite. These are the instructions for the fly. So far, we like what it does. It kind of picks different random positions. It's flying across. Now I have the frog. Right now, I picked the costume where his tongue is sticking out. Well, that's not how I want it to start. I always want it to start with this costume. There's, so remember, there's a frog 2A, 2B, and a hopping 2C. So I'm going to go to the code, and this is where you start changing the looks. Okay, so in the looks, I'm going to say switch costume. And I'm going to use that a couple times. So I'm duplicating that. So in the beginning, I want my program to always use 2A. Green flag. So when the green flag is clicked, there's my frog starting there. Uh, I need that starting location since we know we're going to be making the frog move around. So it's important. I like to just drag it to where I want them to start. And there's that little target dot. So you know if, if we click the flag... Uh, or the uh, space bar, we would have hit the, the fly. So I thought that would be kind of cool to do. So here's my starting location. And this block right here says go there. So I always, when the green flag is clicked, we're telling people when the game starts. Oh, that was the wrong number. <laughs> Let's see, let me drag the frog down again. I'm going to put him there. Let me use this one. Oh, why does it always move it there? That's really interesting. Watch this. Hey, V, do you see that? That's pretty interesting. Look, I'm moving the frog to a new location, but my motion blocks are not updating. That is that is strange. Is right? yeah, like, watch. This is I've never seen this before, ever. Watch. I move the frog, and you'll notice here it tells you where it is, the new X or the Y. So if, say, I move it towards the middle, it's close to 0, 0. But look at the X and Y blocks. They're just stuck on 82, 143. Isn't that wild? I've never seen that before. Anybody, anybody in the live stream seen that before? Let us know in the chat. I'm pretty sure it's not happening on your Scratch projects. Normally, if I drag it to the location these numbers get updated. So it should say minus 76 and minus 94. So since I know what that's what it is, I'll do it. Minus 76 and minus 94, is that right? Yeah, 
and there's the right cost. Okay, now what I'd like to do is show you, all right, now I want to do like when somebody hits the space bar, the tongue comes out. Whoops, I just knocked my video. Space bar, all right. Five minute warning, five minute warning. Space bar event. When the space bar is clicked, you'll notice it's the second event one. I want the costume to change. So remember, it was frog switch costume to 2B. So I want the, the tongue to come out when I press the space bar. And then I want it to wait a little bit. How long, V, should I have it stick out and then go back? What do you think? Two seconds. Two seconds? Ooh, that, that gives it a little. Let's give it a try. Two seconds. Now, this is where people, you can alter it. So now when I click the space bar, his tongue comes out. Ooh, that would have caught the fly. Did you see that? Now, it stays out for two seconds. That's going to make it hard for me to chase him, but I'll try to play. That makes it a harder game. I like that. So now you'll notice, you'll, you'll know why I have that red the red part, right? So now every time I'm pressing the space bar, my frog shoots out. But the thing is, he's he's stuck here, right? So we didn't add any code that tells the computer to move the frog. So this is where uh, last week, if you watched the video, we did, in episode one, we had some simple code for moving. So you want to watch that. Today, we're going to use uh, the more advanced code that Varen, it's just a different way of moving, but it's smoother, smoother movement. So uh, Varen, I'm going to use the if-then conditional. I know you were saying if not last week, but I'm going to use the if then in a forever loop. Is that all right? Yeah, that's good. Okay, because I'm going to say, and, and here you'll notice I'm going to drag two of these out. So we're going to tell left and right arrows. So if someone presses in sensing, there's this key here. Down in blue, there's this key space pressed. You'll notice I'm putting that inside. This is the condition, right? If your parents ever said, hey, you can go outside and play in one condition, get your homework done or finish your chores. Well, that's what conditionals are, is the condition needs to be true before you can issue the commands inside. So we're going to do, I'm going to start with left arrow and then right arrow. These are my two conditions. And I'm just keeping it simple for now. And we'll keep adding. So if the left arrow is pressed, I need to move to the left. Well, we just talked about that's an X and Y. So we'll say change X by going to the left is a negative. So let's try it. And this is where you can control if you want a faster moving, slower moving, and we need another change X by 10. So I'm going to connect these two together. But this is the computer is so fast. Right now it checks if the arrows were pressed once and it goes up oh, nope they weren't so it didn't move i want the computer checking these things forever and you've heard of that loop before it's called a forever loop so oops sorry i'm just kind of trying to so you'll notice i put these two conditionals inside of a forever and i'm going to attach it to the start of the game so now it goes to the starting location it picks the basic frog and it's forever waiting for me to press an arrow key so here we go i'm going to press the right arrow key Oops, I need, to, I need to stop first and start the program over. And you'll see this is kind of highlighted yellow because there's we told the computer to do something forever. So here we go. There's my frog. Now there's a 10. So if I hold the key down, that's pretty smooth. Now if you think that's too jumpy, um, I like to change the numbers here. So play around with numbers that you like for your game. If you like a fast frog... Let's restart it. That's pretty smooth. And don't, don't forget, I've got a game where if I hit the, the space bar, his tongue shoots out for two seconds. Ooh, what I like is I can kind of kill, still move him. So you can kind of have his tongue hanging out there. Now, I haven't added keys for making the frog go up or down yet, right? But you have the idea, that's my challenge to you, is you know how to do it now, right? You would add more conditionals that say, if the up arrow is pressed, move change Y by a number. And if the down arrow is pressed, change Y by a negative number. And suddenly you'll be able to move smoothly in all directions. Space bar. All right. So now you notice, hey, I hit the fly, um, the fly, but nothing happened. 
we need one more conditional on the fly code that says, hey, if, if I run into the color red, now you'll know why I picked that red color, the fly says, hey, I've been caught. Um, and then the other thing is add a sound every time you, you stick out the tongue. So this is the code here. I'm going to shrink this a little bit. Sorry, we're going to go to code sharing here soon. I just wanted to uh, get uh, the game a little bit more playable so people can kind of see it. Um, sounds, there's a little pop sound. I'm just going to say play the pop sound every time I hit the space bar, and you can hear it. And it, it waits. Now, remember, we told it to stick out for two seconds. I'm going to shorten it V to one second. There we go. Now, Blue Whale, V, don't forget to put your the work that you're doing so far. Put it in the studio so I can show people. Jax Vader has uh, his in there as well. So there's my fly popping. Now I need the code on the fly. You'll notice I went back to the fly. I'm going to hit the stop sign to just tell the computer, take a break. Now, we already have a forever loop that's moving it. Well, inside this forever loop, while it's moving, let's have it check if it ran into the color red. And if it did, it can go like, ah, you got me, right? You could say something. So we need another conditional. This is a new condition that says if, now remember, this is on the fly code. If I'm sensing that I've touched this color, ooh, look, there's a second one. You'll notice these conditionals have a unique shape. Now I can change the color. Now this is why I picked 100, 100, 100. It's easy. A computer is very, very specific. It's going to look for the exact match. Well, it's looking for a match of 100, 100, 100, and that's what I'd made the tongue be. And if that happens, what do I want it to do? I want it to play something. I want it to say something. And this is where you can add points and scores as well. So instead of pop, I'm going to record something. All right, so Blue Whale, can I record your, your uh, voice for this one? Do you want to be saying something when the fly gets caught by the frog? I'm fine with that. You ready? Okay, if you're fine, all right. I'm going to I'm going to say 3 2 1 and I'm going to record. I'm going to go quiet and we'll see if we can record what you're saying. You ready? 3 2 1 ah! Oh, it didn't come through. Mm. Ah, it's not. Sorry, it's not. I'm going to stop the recording and say re-record. I was hoping that your voice would come through, but I think it's on my it's a setup issue I have to work on. Sorry about that. But at home you can record your own. I'm gonna do a re-record and I'm gonna try to emulate blue uh, blue whale. Here we go. Ah Alright, so you'll notice there's my recording of my sound. I'm gonna kinda say I'm gonna cut this is gonna cut to this part. Let's check it out. Let's see if we like it. Ah Alright. It's not my best scream, but I'll use it. I'll save it. So now I've created a recording one. Now this is one of the best parts of Scratch is you can record. So now if it touches the color red, I don't want it to play pop. I want it to play recording one. And I need the computer to constantly check that. Is it touching that color? So let's do that. Let's put it inside this loop. Now you'll notice I'm going to kind of pull these apart so you can see how I'm stacking them. So, so this says move. A little bit check if you're touching red if that's true if you did play a recording if you want to add points to your game do that here if not keep checking if you're if you've made it to the other side of the screen all right let's see if we're playable here I'm going full screen um, I can move left or right and if I hit the space bar my tongue sticks out now since I haven't moved the up and down arrows oh I got a chance Ah, oh, I couldn't get them so I'm kind of hoping, this is where you can see I challenge you in your games to add the up and down arrow. And every time I stick my tongue out, I'm hoping the fly comes within range. Come on, fly. Give me a shot. No, I need a fly to come out here. I'm in, I'm in trouble. See, this is where my game controls are limited. I need to move up and down. That way I could move my tongue around. All right, so I'm hoping your games at home are doing um, adding some extra. I always like leaving a little bit of extra challenge for everybody. Uh, let's do a little bit of sharing. I'm going to do a little quick check on the comments here. Let's do a refresh. Anybody ready to share? 
lol. All right, he's like, ah, green flag reveal. Green screen revealed. No, you saw the green screen. You aren't supposed to see behind the scenes. That's going to be a special video. Uh, here we go. Uh, oh, can you be a curator? Yes. Oh, so, we, okay. So, uh, Whit, uh, Whitney, I, by next week, I'll add you as an invite. And if you check it, I'll definitely make you a curator. You can still add your project today. Uh, let's take a quick look at the projects we've got. Don't forget the blue, the blue screen, the green screen bus challenge. Let's see what we've got here. I'm going to do, I think, Jack's Vader's first. All right, this is the comments that we were looking at. There's my froggy one if you want to look at the code. Jack Spader is the only one that's shared so far. All right, let's check out his program. Frog get food. His instructions. I always read the instructions. Click the green flag and enjoy the short animation. Ooh, and I like to play it full screen. Here we go. Ooh, he's got a frog animation. Here comes the fly. Ooh, look at that. Tongue come out. Well, and the flies burp. <laughs> oh, and it does it again. Ugh, I like it. Blue whale smiling. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I like that. Anim Great animation, Jack Spader. Awesome. And then the burp. I like the burp at the end. I wonder if that's scientifically accurate. I wonder if frogs burp. I don't know. Maybe they do. That would be kind of cool. All right. So here's what I want to show you about Scratch in the community is with the login, I'm going to give it a, a heart. And uh, again, positive comments. Remember the community guidelines for Scratch. Be friendly. Great animation. Love it. Code on. So I encourage you to look at other people's projects and let them know what you think or if it gave you new ideas of how they did it. I think feedback is a part of the community community fun with this. Good job, Jack Spader. I like it. Keep working on it. Anybody else got any? We're going to have to wrap up here soon. Oh, there we go. Code Coach. Who did that? What? SP20 Fox. Oh, there's v, uh, V's. Let me check out what SP... I can't ignore something that says the code coach. Guys, number one on trending. Woo. What? Let's see. I'm going to give it a heart. Oh, is this your challenge for next week? Oh, this is a... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Fox. You didn't... Oh, you copied. You did a remix. All right. Now, I want to share uh, projects people created today. So this is a remix. So, oh, you found something called the code coach from someone else. <laughs> All right, I'll have to check that one out later. I wanted to share projects people created today. So we've got, let me check V's. Thanks for sharing that one. Uh, let's see, up oh, V, I'm going to go full screen. Oh, he's got multiple flies all over. Uh, I'm still oh, working on the frog. Still working on the frog movement. Ooh, look at the flies. I like that. Look, he's got three flies bouncing around. I like that. That is awesome. So here's, here's where, as you get more advanced in Scratch, let me uh, skip that. Uh, let me see. I'm going to say an accurate, an accurate um, replica of my hiking experiences. <laughs> there are sometimes lots of, depends on if there's horses on the trail, you get a lot of flies out there. Uh, let's take a quick look at the code. We're going to wrap up here in a minute. I promise. I promise. I like seeing the code. Now, if you look at somebody else's code, the little plus here blows it up. And if you can't see everything, I right click and I say clean up blocks. It kind of and the equals kind of centers it. So I can see he's got some code that it was a practice. He's still working on. But here's what he did. He says point in a random direction. Let's zoom in on that. This is this is important. Randomness in games and stories. Uh, there's a math operator called random. We're going to be doing that in future episodes as well. It's really interesting because it makes it so every time you're, someone uses your program, it doesn't do the exact same thing. So you can add some elements of randomness. Now, it depends. Sometimes you have a story. You want it to do the exact same thing. So it depends on what you want to create. But knowing that there's the ability to create randomness there. So he created a sprite and he copied... Um, the sprite multiple times. So we can show you how to do that. If you right click, you can duplicate a sprite. So once you have code running and you want to copy that sprite and its code, 
He created three flies, and then there's this one here. What is this little red dot going to be? Oh, he's got a red dot sprite. I wasn't sure. Nice. Um, all right. I hope everybody had some fun creating today. Uh, thanks for joining the live stream. Are there any more? Did I miss any more there? There's the coach's code bus. I'll do a little refresh. Oh, Whit I. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Sorry if I'm not saying Whitney. I keep saying Whit I. I'm going to call you 144. Let's check out 144. Blue Whale, I haven't seen your project yet. Come on, assistant coach. Set the proper example. I'm, I'm, I'm working on the end backdrop for when the frog actually catches the fly. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. Yeah, and to me, projects, that's what these are. They're projects. It's hard to finish a project the way you really want in 45 minutes. So this is the start. Share intermediate. Let's check out what Wit Eye has so far. It's got the frog. Whoa, look at that fly drawing. <laughs> it's doing soup loop de loops. Nice. Let me see if I hit the space bar. Oh, there's the space bar. It's got the tongue. Oh, and, and you have the movement. Oh, and there's up and down. Ah, can I get it? So you've got the playable game. When I got farther than I did. Nice. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, I got it. Yes. <laughs> oh, I got it. Yes. Yeah. She's got the play. When I's got, I don't know, he or she, sorry. When I's got the playable, playable game. Nice. Now look at that. I like that frog movements. All right. So great job. Let me, let me, uh, I'll, I'll be playing all day. And then people, parents will be like, Hey, I got to get my kids off the live stream. Um, sorry, parents too much fun. Oh, somebody already gave it a heart. Awesome. Somebody else saw it. Fun to play. Great creation. Code on. Nice. Good job. And even if you don't comment, it's nice to look at other people's projects and give them hearts and stuff like that. I like it. I like it. Um, let's see. Last last chance. Last chance. Let's see if there's any more. And that's okay, Blue Whale, if you want to share as you're working like V did. it's uh, To me, I always just type in the comments like, hey, it's a work in process. That's fine. I love Jack Spader's animations and V's random flies and with eyes uh, spiraling <laughs> fly drawing. I love it. That's awesome. And the recorded scream was much better than mine. I love it. Uh, awesome. Any last questions, V? Or uh, I just wanted to remind everybody, code on, tell your parents to contact me via email, subscribe to the newsletter. This is all a message for the parents, not to you guys. Um, and that way each week. So the next couple Saturdays all through this month in March, I'm going to keep going. I may have to take a little break in April. If you would like to be a co-host like Blue Whale and V, uh, I need parent permission forms because these are recorded videos. So again, that's up to your parents and whether it's something you'd like to do. Uh, I like to interview new creators uh, every time. So I hope these two are able to join us next week. I hope you had a lot of fun. Keep creating. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care. Stay well. Thank you, Blue Whale. Thanks, B.